r slash ask reddit. What are your best examples of people cheating the system? I'll start. So I work in the luggage claim department for a major airline. All day I get to hear customers yelling and complaining. What I did is borrow one of the wheelchairs from the airport and sit behind my desk all day long. The customers come in all angry see me in the wheelchair realize they are about to yell at a guy who is possibly crippled and all of a sudden they turn into the nicest people. Physically my blood pressure has dropped and in general I'm in a pretty good mood most of the time edit. So. You are the wind beneath my wings. I hope this goes right to the top. Getting things done but using psychology to make it pleasant. My boss will often check the date modified on certain files on our server to see if I have updated or even opened a certain file recently. So, I have installed a change a utility that allows me to modify the date modified on any file. This comes in most handy when my boss wants to give me weekend assignments. I just come in on Monday morning and change the date modified to Saturday night and he thinks I was actually doing something for work on Saturday night. I've actually received a lot of kudos for this. I don't feel bad though, because my boss is a huge donghead. This is one of the best ones here. That's gaming the system, but without stealing or whatever else so many of the others have. This is in the spirit of the tracksuit bucket of chicken lady. Edit. Everybody keeps replying that tracksuit bucket of chicken lady is stealing. No more than people are stealing when they are browsing reddit, talking on the phone, or taking smoke breaks while getting paid. She might be making the rest of her day more productive by getting that break in the middle of the day the only way she can. We don't know. Yes, we should all aim to cheat in the spirit of the tracksuit bucket of chicken lady. Bless her. Edit. I think Ron would approve. My wife and I were at a super fancy restaurant in NYC. Reservations not allowed. Expect to wait. We get there and are told we will be waiting about 2 hours. No problem we planned on this. Some guy right after us shook the reservation guy's hand handing him $200. Next thing I know I hear table for 2 for Thomas. Thomas being my name and I asked for a table of 2 I say that is me. They sit us and we order drinks and apps. 5 minutes later they say we are the wrong Thomas but we could stay since we had already ordered. Guess who was the right Thomas? The guy who paid $200 to skip the line. This is gold because you cheated somebody who was trying to cheat. You ought to be higher up in the comment ranks. Did your night then suddenly turn into you running from bad guys? Stealing an Audi and busting the DA at a strip club? I was flying last month, and the plane I was on had Wi-Fi. There was a free 15 minute trial, and then you could purchase a chunk of time. I just kept deleting the cookies on my phone, refreshing, and logging back in. I stayed online for over an hour for free. You're a menace to society. Think of all the worn out internet tubes because of him. Monstrous. I use Limui to download Limui Pro. Every time someone posts this I find myself grinning and nodding my head. I thought I was a ducking genius when I did it. I knew someone who would hold one religious ceremony in his house every year so that it could be considered a place of worship and he didn't have to pay taxes. HTTP colon slash slash imgur compile z2 He's still got it ladies and gentlemen. When I was in college, I had this meal plan where the school essentially took my actual money and turned it into campus dollars that could only be spent at school dining halls and cafes. I didn't mind so much until the end of the semester, when I was informed that any unspent campus dollars would go away. I had more than a hundred bucks left, and only a day to spend them. Here's what I did. I went to the nicest campus restaurant the one where you're supposed to take your parents when they come to visit. Basically, a real restaurant with waitstaff. That also happened to take campus dollars. I got the most expensive thing on the menu, and then called the waiter over. I asked him if I could tip him in campus dollars, and he said yes. I asked him if he would have immediate access to those campus dollars, in the form of actual money, and he said yes. So I made him a deal. I gave him a monster tip, and he gave me half of it back in actual money. Many years later, I am still proud of this. I made a server's day, screwed the man, and got my money back. I think this wins the thread by pleasing everyone. You cheated the system and helped someone while getting your own money back so no one can beach about stealing. Nice. Torrenting college textbooks. I love the internet. I once torrented textbook for a computer ethics class. 
The irony of this statement is so delicious I could sell it for $30 a plate. Whenever people come to the pool where I lifeguard and have guests with them, I always ask them if they live more than 50 miles away. Our policy is guests from more than 50 miles away don't pay guest fees. If they say no I give them the look and ask them again. They usually say yes after that. Saving customers $2 like a boss. There is nothing better than employees who try to save customers money. Having worked in customer service, I have no idea what in the hell compels you to do it. But I thank and commend you. You are a fine human being. I get paid by my work even though I am on reddit for 5-6 hours per day. 5-6 noob. I need to see all of you in my office immediately. I bring all my rechargeable items, shaver, cell phone, laptop, etc. to work and plug them in there. I figure I must have saved at least $1 to $2 last year in electricity. The college I commuted to didn't have enough parking for the commuters but roughly 10 times what it needed for the residents. One day I was forced to park in the resident parking and got a ticket. Every day I had to park there I'd slip the ticket under my windshield wiper and walk on into class. The cars around me would get tickets but they'd just leave the old one on my windshield figuring they already got me. Never even paid it. Worcester State did a horrible job of enforcing parking fines 10 years ago. I did this at my school. I put the ticket under my windshield and for the first time or so it worked. Then I started getting tickets again. One day I sat outside. When I parked legally. And watched the parking guys do their thing. Turns out they mark the tires of the newly ticketed with chalk. It's genius. Really. Who looks at their tires? So then I noted the rotation of colors they used and bought my own chalk. I live in a campus apartment and they've recently changed the visitor spots to 4 hours only. One morning while waiting for the bus I saw the parking police marking the tires of all the cars in the visitor spots with chalk indicating the time a ticket could be written. As soon as he left I went and wiped the chalk off each of the car's tires. I giggled the whole time I was doing it. I can afford college thanks to bigotry. I have two moms. And thanks to the law. My non-birth mom is technically not my legal parent. So when I applied for the FAFSA, I could legally say that I was raised by a single mother who works part time. Financial aid's even sweeter when it feels like you're getting revenge for living with people's bullshit. Friend of mine born in Cape Town, immigrated to USA at 2, African American on all standardized testing and college applications. White as the Yeti, it's a typical one, but still gold. Edit. For non-Americans, in the USA, many colleges or loans grants give added weight to people of minority status, intended to make up for institutional racism. In a process called affirmative action, she is white, but she claimed a minority status through a technicality, and is recorded as such on the census, opening doors intended for visible minorities to her that would otherwise not be open. And that is why affirmative action programs based on race alone are bullshit. Help people who are poor and needy, not just skin color in a certain way. Trevor Richards was suspended from his Omaha High School for applying for the Distinguished African American Student Award. He is a South African Yeti as well. At the arcade if you pull the ticket out real slow and careful you can get an extra one. Boom. I lived in a trailer park next to a Chuck E. Cheese and before they got the shredders, they just threw out the old tickets in trash bags. I'd wait until the shift changed the next day and split the tickets with my friends. Great system. Why haw. All the pixie sticks you could snort. Old lady, 80s, at my college bookstore, walked in the back with a bag, placed two books in her bag, and then I watched walk to the front as she sold them back to the bookstore. I wanted to say something, but was too impressed. I'm not surprised. Some of the most audacious doucher baggery I've seen in my life was done by old ladies. If you are a woman over about 55 you are invisible. You are non-threatening, unassuming, and trustworthy. You are grammar. You can get away with things you wouldn't believe. I used to work in a camera store that sold warranties. No matter how the camera broke, they would fix it or replace it under the warranty. The only problem was that the store would ship off the camera to be repaired. Sometimes for months, up to 5 times before replacing it. So, let's say your battery cover breaks off, 
you ship it off and 6 weeks later it's back. But, it's really a brand defect, so, the cover pops off again. They won't replace the whole piece or give you another camera. You're out the camera for months while it's being fixed. They keep selling the defective camera and the warranties. I got tired of ducking over customers. I thought it was dishonest. I read the contract myself and found an interesting clause. If the camera was so physically damaged that it was obvious it couldn't be fixed, we could take a pic of it and send that instead. The person immediately got a new camera. When people would come in with a camera with a defect I'd seen 100 times, I'd ask if they just wanted a new one. The next model up, without the defect, they'd say yes and I'd tell them to take it out into the parking lot and run over it with their car. I'd pile the pieces on the counter, take a pic and give them their new, non-defective camera. I slept fine. If you were feeling particularly malicious after they run over their camera you could tell them that intentional damage isn't covered under warranty. And just cherish the horrified look on their face before telling them you are just kidding and give them a new camera. A teacher I had in high school always said to his students if you can get away with cheating go for it. Turns out he had gotten a raise for getting his master's degree, but never actually got the degree. This went on for over 10 years before the school system figured it out. Somehow he got hired at a new school too. Classic winger. Notches. At my university I would always order delivery from a late night eatery and get a ride home with the delivery guy. Less expensive than a taxi, with a meal included. Cue porno music. Papa John's offers an unadvertised, maybe unofficial, deal where pizzas that were ordered but never picked up are sold for $5 just before closing. Size and toppings doesn't affect the $5 price. So, my friends and I used to order family sized meat lovers pizzas and opt to pay at pickup but never show up. We would wait till closing, pop our heads in and ask if there were any leftover pizzas on the rack for sale. Thus, getting our huge pizzas for $5. I work at Papa John's and I've never heard of this. Enjoy your local deal. I suspect that whoever works at that Papa John's is making some money on the side selling leftover pies and not ringing them up. I've never heard of this either and managed several Papa John's. I'm from Northern Ireland, and when ordering stuff online I'd always write Belfast, Ireland on it instead of NI. The post will still get there, as yes, technically Belfast's in Ireland P. The post would be directed via the Dublin sorting office instead of coming into the UK routes. 9 times out of 10, the Dublin sorting office would just send it on up to Belfast, instead of forwarding it to Royal Mail in London who would then slap a huge import bill on it, whereas the Southern Irish Postal Service can't charge me import, as I'm a UK citizen. The Republic of Ireland couldn't give a duck if the Queen's out of pocket over a few quid. PMY Granddad was a Royal Mail postman for years. He taught me that one. P. Edit, for anyone who's confused if you live in Northern Ireland, which is part of the UK, you have to pay UK import tax on stuff you buy from outside the EU. If you write Ireland as your address instead of NI, the parcel will be sent to the Republic of Ireland, different country, same Ireland, who usually forwards straight to you instead of sending it back to the UK so you can charge. It's a sneaky way of avoiding import tax. For me it doesn't go much further than crapping on company time. Still, I like those craps so much more than the ones at home. The boss makes a dollar when I make a dime that's why I shit on company time. That's a nursery rhyme hit. Back in high school I discovered that if you call any questions comments number on a food product, you could make up literally anything and get a coupon for a free whatever it was. So for instance we'd call this quick pancake mix and say we bought a jar of mix but inside we found three already made pancakes. Shit like that. Just nonsensical stuff. We did it so much that we'd pile up the coupons. Go to the grocery store and check out a full cart of groceries and just hand the cashier a stack of these coupons and not pay a cent for hundreds of dollars worth of groceries. We did that multiple times. And eventually the big companies. Kraft. General Mills. ETC. Catch on and you have to use different names and addresses. I'll never forget the exasperation of the poor person on the other end of the line when I told them the chicken patties I bought just get more frozen every time I put them in the microwave. The kids are outside playing hockey with the duck in thing right now. This is bullshit. 
In the good old days of Black Friday before stores like Best Buy started getting very crafty and clandestine with their deals. 8 plus years ago, there used to be a slight buffer where someone would leak the sales and the items wouldn't be removed from the shelves. I don't remember specifically but they had a system to prevent you from purchasing then prismaching retroactively. As soon as this happened I strolled on down to Best Buy took a bunch of stuff that I wanted, and put it in their dryers and washing machines. Basically whatever hiding place that didn't look like it got a lot of browsing or consideration. Then when Black Friday comes, sleep in, head to the store around noon and pull the door busters out of a washing machine. Nice and not illegal. Well done. Here is a Canadian one. Being Canadian it's even ethical. Wait outside a superstore gas station and watch for users that leave the receipt. On the end of each left receipt is a super buck. 20 minutes and you can collect enough for lunch. Saw a bum doing this. Thought it was pretty creative. My favorite homeless entrepreneur asked people for their tickets when they left a nearby paid parking lot early and sold them for zero dollars. At 50 each. There's a guy in downtown Ottawa who does something similar. He helps you park your car. Open bracket. Stopping traffic and directing you. As it's a bit of a pain to park in these spots. Then. When you go to pay. B. Correctly. Informs you that you don't need to pay. As it's past 5.30pm. When the meter's shut off. He then asks if you have some spare change. I almost never give anything to the homeless downtown. And yet he's gotten cash from me on more than one occasion. I used to be a member of NY Sports Club. It is a semi-expensive gym here. At the time if you forgot your ID card you could just tell the person behind the desk your number. I always forgot. After a while I noticed I was transposing two numbers in my ID and they were still letting me in. I cancelled my membership and had free all access gym membership for 3 years. Ha. Huh. I did this at a local racket club for a while. The very first time, I walked in like I knew the people behind the desk. I waved and said a very friendly hello like I was happy to be seeing them again. There was a guy and a girl working the desk and they both smiled and waved back as I walked in without paying or showing an id card. Perhaps each thought I knew the other? I did this on Monday nights for several months and it worked every time. After a while, they did recognize me and the smiles and hellos became genuine. Old job gave us smoke breaks, but number 15 minute breaks for non-smokers. I explained this was bullshit to my boss. He didn't get it. So I took up smoking again. I'd take 15 minutes every shift to stand behind the building with a lit cigarette, puff it once, and then call my girlfriend on the phone. I actually know someone that started smoking for this reason. She had never smoked before. They knew who smoked and who didn't and restricted those extra 15 minute smoke breaks to real smokers. Now she's addicted. Whoa. That's terrible. If you want to cancel your cell phone contract without paying a fee, pull up the provider's service map. Find a huge hole in the map, like a desert out west. Look for a town name in that map. Tell them you're moving to Potsdam, Arizona and you want to cancel because they don't provide service there. Boom. Three times now. Three times. Edit. I've done it with AT&T two time. Veras and the other. Last time was AT&T in 2011. Bonus cheat for over 1k up votes. If you get ticket in DC from an automatic traffic camera. Wait three or four months then write a letter saying I called on A. B. C, X, Y, Z, and I wrote letters on Q, R, S, and I have never received a response. If I am one, not contacted Ray, this erroneous ticket this week or two, the ticket is not dismissed this week. I will be filing charges at X courthouse. For your information, there aren't really any charges you can press, but the ticketing is ran by a for-profit company. Their job is to ignore complaints unless it looks like you are going to make trouble. I've had 10 plus tickets dismissed this way over the past 5 years. A guy in my neighborhood owned a piece of land where buildings had been planned to be built. After his wife died. Eerie coincidence. Yes. He turned it into a graveyard with only her grave in it so the government couldn't take the land. Eminent domain applies to cemeteries. Though. And that's how you get the movie Poltergeist. When I was a, precociously computer savvy, 
10 11 year old. I found a website that parents could set up as a reward system for children doing chores. The parent would set up an account listing several chores and assign them point values. The child, after completing these chores, could then use the points to buy various items offered on the website. There was, somehow, no charge for any of the stuff. So, I created two email accounts, two passwords on the site, and set up a really generous reward system where I got tons of points for doing imaginary chores. I used this to buy a shitload of Pokemon cards, that I then played with my grandpa because I didn't actually have any friends. Ninja Reddit, if anyone remembers anything about this website, I actually tried to find it again years later and couldn't, probably due to the terrible unsustainable business model. Please share. This website was set up by your grandfather who needed an excuse to play Pokemon. It was a long con. When I went on a cruise, when we stopped in Mexico and drove through a small town, I noticed every single building had these metal poles sticking through the roof along where the walls on the first floor were. I asked a local guy why this was and he said it was because if you kept them there they didn't have to pay taxes for it seeing as it was still under construction. Edit. Turns out it's more common than I had ever thought. It's like that in Greece too. Seems to be working out well for them. The first rule of stealing is you don't talk about it ever with anyone no matter how anonymous you think you are. Ima steal this rule. I bought a wireless network adapter for my Xbox off eBay that was broken. I paid like $8 for it. I bought a new one at Walmart for like $40. Returned the broken one to the store. Yeah that was stealing. Shouldn't have done that. Today I learned. If you want easy karma, write about ripping off Walmart and say they are evil. I do this thing where you buy the ticket for one movie and then nonchalantly walk into the theaters for other movies within the theater after the first movie finishes. I believe the technical term for this is, movie hopping. I prefer the old double feature. Back in high school I would buy massive quantities of arcade tokens from the manufacturers off of eBay. I was getting about $10 worth of tokens for each $1 spent. I was there one afternoon when some kid went up to the counter and pointed out that the token machine was giving out tokens from some other arcade. The owner was more than upset and I knew it was time to find a new arcade. My favorite part of just about every comment is how the poster is cheating the system and all the reply comments are all indignant hey, you're stealing committing fraud, isn't that what cheating the system, and therefore the point of this thread, boils down to using best buy warranties to get a new iphone every time a new model comes out, isn't that just pure fraud? We just bought a laptop and the 2 year warranty was over $200 which I thought was insane. And the salesman said, yes well it covers complete replacement even if it is your fault. I said, well shouldn't I just break it just under 2 years and bring it back for a new one? He said, that's what I do. Take a big glass of coke and pour it over the keyboard while your computer is on. Making sure you fry the motherboard. Otherwise, they'll just replace parts, this way you'll get a whole new laptop. My co-worker would leave at 4pm to go to the bathroom, leaving the office light on, his chair at an angle, and the computer on, no power save. He would disappear until 9am the next morning. Boss never figured it out. I mostly throw things on the ground. I won't be part of your system. In Norway almost every store have a 3 weeks free return policy. So when I had a movie project at school I bought a camera for about $700 only to return it when I was finished. Edit. Another story but not me. I saw some guys at a pizza restaurant in Norway. Dolly Dimples. They ordered a pizza. Ate it leaving one piece. Then they went to the counter telling them it was a hair on that piece and they got a new pizza. This actually disgusted me. Whoa. You made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.